there is a power that comes from the scriptures that we talk about wrestling not against flesh and blood but against principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. It's a power that gives the reactions that we feel sometimes when somebody hates. For instance, have you ever been around someone who is hateful? You can almost sense their presence when they walk into a room. You can see on their countenance the angry furrow of their forehead. You can feel as it were emanating from them some type of energy that just doesn't seem right. As a matter of fact, when we look at them sometimes we realize that there must be something more to this scriptural and spiritual truth about hatred than what we take for granted by simply saying that hating is not correct when it comes to individual people and hating people groups or hating for some reason other than God hating sin. Because, you see, whether we know it or not, there's something behind the scenes to everything that's going on in the world. There's something behind the reactions that we feel that are causing us to not want to be around someone that hates. Because if we are comfortable in that environment of hate, then really there's something wrong with us. Because, you see, God is love. And God said that though he may hate certain aspects of things that pull people away from God or turn them away from Him, He is love. While He may have created the emotion of hate, the power that's behind the hate is what is enabling people to unfortunately go down a path of destruction that leads to corruption and eventually takes them to a place of sin where they cannot remain and they will not enter into the Kingdom of Heaven if they hate. That's part of the problem of the process of what hate does. It takes you down a path. God said, do not go. He said, be ye angry and sin not. Because if you give in to anger and you recognize it for what it is, if it's meant to take you from one direction to another, you'll use that energy in a positive and constructive way. Because it says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, but rather deal with it before you go to bed. Because a lot of people that hate show by way of their history that at some point in time they started off angry. They began with something that conflicted with what they felt and then they didn't respond to it correctly with forgiveness or mercy. They didn't extend God's love in that situation. They did not give grace for grace. As a matter of fact, usually hatred comes from an angry response to something that they were unable to cope with, to deal with, or to recognize that something behind that anger was causing friction and fraction and division and strife. And a lot of people like to go off on these tangents and say, oh, well, the devil did this, or the devil did that, and the devil is this, and the devil is that, or, you know, the spirit of this or the spirit of that. Well, no, it's not a spirit of, that's just a cop-out word to cover all the things we don't understand about the spiritual world. The reality is that the power behind some of the things that we see and do is what is influencing those people to react or to act. You yourself know that you feel that power coming at you when someone hates. You can even see it now in the cyber world, which is very closely connected, believe it or not, to the spiritual world in a lot of ways that people don't recognize or realize. Words that are written or post it in anger, somehow that power behind the words comes across through the cyber network and you read it and you know you're affected by it. And it's not just reading into it, no, it's receiving from the spirit that was there at the time that the person wrote it. Or in reality, the power that was behind the words that were being said. You yourself know that when you read something you can say, and you recognize most of the time, that, man, that person's angry. You know, and it's not just because they write in some angry tone. You know yourself that you've read things that were self-righteously written, and sometimes you felt the anger coming out of the person, and you went, whoa, and you were taken back by the discernment that God had given you to recognize the power behind the words. 
In history, we are told that the pen is mightier than the sword for a particular reason, because we do recognize that words have a power behind them. They are able to do something we don't know. And it's not just simply a profession of the word, because a lot of people like to say, speak into existence things, and it's not true. It has nothing to do with it. It has to do with the power behind the words. And if the power behind the words is correct, for instance, like God being the power behind the words, let there be light, then the power behind the words causes there to be light, God. Likewise, whenever you're dealing with words and speaking them, writing them, or inscribing them in some way, be careful of the power behind the words. Be careful of the spirit that you have behind what you're saying or doing because it's communicating itself across the medium that you're using, whether it be written in a book, whether it be written in a letter, whether it be written in a postcard, whether it be written or inscribed on the internet or posted, whether it be in an instant message, whether you be talking face to face. We're told that the tongue is mightier than the sword and that it's like a, an unruly member and that it can spit out all these things because out of the heart comes all these vile, ego, maniacal, yucky kind of trespasses and sins and murders and angst that goes on against the Spirit of God, against peace, love, and joy. And so we find in that reality that we need to be careful because in our words, in our voice, in our things we say, things we write, and things that we promote, we are actually giving place for that power behind the words to accomplish something we may not have intended. You may have a perfect presentation, but if you're angry and furious and you present that presentation in the wrong attitude, the wrong spirit, the wrong power behind the words, then you're going to find that, guess what? Your hearers didn't really get the message. They got the attitude. They didn't get the message. And that's probably the most important thing that Jesus was saying about the attitudes was that blessed are the poor in spirit. Because more often than not, the attitude will communicate greater than the words themselves. But the power behind them is what is empowering the words to have the effect on the soul that the mind may not necessarily receive from the message itself. So, we likewise ought to be careful of the things that we read as well as the things that we hear because those words that we hear causes us to have faith and if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God then using in a negative way the power behind that then something would cause us to have less faith if it's not the word of God and we listen to it and we are assaulted by the power behind it we could actually be influenced in a negative way to create a false sense of security, a false faith, a lack of confidence in the things that are unseen and an unhealthy confidence in only those things we can see. Because that's what hatred does. Hatred often personifies itself not in the unseen realm, but in the physical, verbal, visual world that we live in right now. Hatred can be seen by what it does and what it causes. So it's a very conflicting and a very visual manifestation of power that comes from the spiritual world. So things that are coming from outside of the realm of our world we see, touch, and feel often are more powerful than the things that we can actually see, touch, and feel because those are the reactions or the consequences of things that have happened in the spiritual world. And that's why the power behind the words is so acutely important for us to recognize because God told us He is love. So if we manifested in ourselves the right attitude, love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, self-control, then what we say and what we do would be covered as it were, for love covers a multitude of sins, and a lot of the things that we inadvertently do incorrectly would be covered by the correct attitude and actions that we have. So even the negative things that we hate or that we become angry could be brought under 
the control and self-control of the mind of Christ if we would have the right attitude about them, if we would have the right spirit in us, if we would communicate them in the right power behind the words. You have to be very careful because God always says what he means, means what he says. He's pretty direct. He's very communicative in a way that we can understand. He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who will it not, but give it to all men liberally, that he would allow us to understand those things. That when he wanted to conceal things, and he said he would speak in parables for those who would not hear. And yet the parables were as obvious as the statements themselves, and they didn't see them. Because they're written for our benefit to remind us of those things that, done in the right attitude, even to those that are antagonistic to us, then God can still minister to the person if we would just do it in love. The power behind our words, the spirit that should be behind our actions, our writings, our postings, and all things that we do on the internet, as well as we do in life, ought to be with that spirit. That spirit that caused Jesus to rise from the dead. That spirit that enables us by the power of God to walk in this life without being affected by the world and its ways. That spirit of God that God promised he would give us if we would just but ask him for his spirit. That that comforter would come and he would live inside us. That he would guide us. That he would inspire us. That he would lead us into all truth. That the very words of Jesus and the very power of Jesus would be in what we say and what we do. So that we would affect those areas that we cannot see by using the things that we can see which is probably as simple as saying the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God's Word, when He spoke, is Jesus. God's manifestation of Himself is Jesus. God is personified in Jesus. So, in a way, the world looks at Jesus and sees God. And Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And that is true. And if we would but recognize that Jesus is the Word of God manifest, then we can see how we ought to have the right attitude when we use the words of God to communicate the will of God and the person of Jesus. Today, be careful. Hatred manifests itself in its actions and its direction. But God will always point to himself through the love of God, through the mercy of God, and through the kindness. Because it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. And it is of his kindness that we are. And of his loving kindness we are, which are renewed every day that we are able to approach him by the grace of God that he gives us to find at his presence love, mercy, gentleness, his spirit. The very fact that Jesus intercedes for us daily reminds us that we need God to direct the power behind what we say, what we do, and what we write. Because we have a power behind our words.